We gather here because we are very concerned and upset about the conflict in Israel-Palestine and we know that we are meeting at a time of rising violence. The project is inspired by a longing for reconciliation. It has a deep concern for both communities there and let me add has never in any way sought to be adversarial. In the Balfour project we are very aware that we're listening to two if not more, conflicting narratives. I'm a British Jew and I'm a liberal rabbi. I may have lots of other identities, but these four are the ones that seem relevant to me today, particularly as I think of the forthcoming anniversary of the Balfour Declaration. The Balfour Declaration was born in controversy, contains a contradiction, and its consequence has inevitably been conflict. It couldn't have been otherwise. I have to admit some ignorance before coming across the Balfour Project, but listening to everybody and reading the website, the promise helped to bring about Israel. The second part of the Balfour Declaration was left unfulfilled. What we want to do is to be a third voice to educate all of us as to what British responsibility is and has been in Israel-Palestine all these years. Right from the Balfour letter, through the mandate, through the events in 1948 up to today. The Allies had been planning who would control the Ottoman Empire when the Turks were defeated. I'd like to introduce our very respected colleague in the Balfour Project, Dr. Peter Shambrook, who described himself as a lifelong student of British and French imperialism in the Middle East. The Hussein MacMahon correspondence revisited a promise unfulfilled. The central controversy with the correspondence related to Palestine. The correspondence consisted of a series of nine letters exchanged between July 1915 and March 1916 between Sheriff Hussein of Mecca and Sir Henry McMahon, the British High Commissioner in Cairo, representing the British government. The correspondence primarily was a wartime expedient to obtain a strategic military edge over the Turks. We're deeply concerned and conscious of the weight of history throughout the Middle East, particularly as it rests on Britain. And in our modest way, the Balfour Project wants to make this known and to make a difference, but with particular reference to Palestine and Israel. The book that excited us in the Balfour Project when he published it was The Palestine Deception, which he edited. Politically, there was to begin with the arrival in Palestine of the, of the Zionist Commission, led by Chaim Weizmann as early as March 1918, explanations and justifications of which, according to Ronald Stores, then military governor of Jerusalem, were received with growing incredulity. Zionists, of course, started off with the great advantage over the Arab interest of having a forceful bourgeois presence in European capitals. 
Churchill, one of only a few speakers pronouncing in Palestine specifically in this late at night, was unable to display any particular enthusiasm to what he termed the perfervid enthusiasms of the Zionist project, going out of his way to acquit himself of any responsibility for the Balfour Declaration. I think it's good to look back, as we have been doing this morning, to enable us to look forward better. And that's what diplomats are supposed to do. And that's what I was doing for a while. In 1917, Palestine began its association with Britain. And thus, in a sense, as a Brit, I feel Britain has to have a role to play in assisting the State of Israel and its Palestinian neighbour in reaching a just solution to the current impasse. The theme of the afternoon is the constructive role for the UK in bringing about a just peace. One of our guiding lights in the Balfour Project was the late Bishop John Austin Baker, formerly Bishop of Salisbury and before that chaplain at Westminster. And he wrote these words, Politics and peace processes, even when conducted with integrity and the best of intentions, can take us so far and no further. True and lasting reconciliation depends on something more. It requires that we walk the costly road of sorrow and repentance. Another writer, Maya Angelou, was thinking in the same terms when she wrote this. History, despite its wrenching pain, cannot be unlived, but if faced with courage, need not be lived again. That, in a nutshell, is what the Balfour Project is about in relation to Palestine and Israel. My contention is that the occupation is wrong. I think the pendulum has swung too far away from peace and justice. As uh, uh, Sir Vincent indicated, I believe it is in Israeli's short, medium and long-term interest to end the occupation as soon as practical and possible. I think the first thing is to acknowledge there's urgency. The settlement expansion in the West Bank and East Jerusalem is now about 600,000 people in the wrong place, beyond the Green Line from 1967, and the closure of Gaza, the continued closure of Gaza, is making 1.8 million people, first of all, economically redundant, because they cannot be economically active, and secondly, left with nothing but fear and despair, which is a bad recipe. It is simply beyond any human, Jewish, Muslim, Christian concept that you can kill a child in Gaza because one day he might fire a rocket at you. So what can we do? I would say we can do three things. One is support and sustain the Palestinians. Individually we can visit the place. Those of us of faith should pray. But this is not God's mess. This is our mess. So we should do something about it. And playing a role in changing that pendulum swing, which involves advocacy, involves thought, involves education, involves politics. What if Israel won't listen? I think we have to raise our voices. There need to be consequences for illegal acts, whoever commits them. The idea of Israel, the land, the people, what it means to have a state is a part of being a Jew to which I have an attachment. And the real dilemmas for, 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 uh, for Israel, for me personally, is whether in the long run Israel will remain a democratic um, uh, Western style democracy.
to speak again as a Palestinian, I, I don't think I'm, as much as I would love an apology, it's not really what I, what I want to see necessarily. It's more of an acknowledgement. Israel is there to exist, no question about it. But we have unfinished business and we need to get the Palestinians well what we promised them a hundred years ago. It seems that governments occasionally need to be reminded that sometimes acknowledgement is not a sign of weakness, but a sign of civilization. Whether we meant it or not a hundred years ago, it's on paper and we said we're going to do it and let's go and finish it and acknowledge the, the responsibility. A Palestinian theologian reminds us that the only way to peace is through the door of justice. We believe that justice must include all the peoples in the land in which the God of many names has chosen to be revealed.